If you're looking to integrate live video into your marketing, social selling, communications, perhaps that's even internal comms or crisis management, then you're in the right place for this week's episode of Live Stream Insiders. My name is Krishna Day. I'm delighted that you're able to join me here live or for the replay. And I'm one of the co-hosts of Live Stream Insiders. I'm on my own this week, so I've got three key stories to talk to you about, and I'll do my best that during the show, I'll take a little look over at uh, what's going on in terms of if there's any questions. If I miss you in real time, though, I will certainly come back and watch any questions that you've got in terms of live. So let me just check if there's anything here to get us started in terms of any questions. Nothing at the moment, um, but I will be watching that um, going forward. I should also just say that I'm usually joined by my co-host, Peter Stewart. He's unfortunately not able to be with us this week, um, but that's what our passion is, is to really bring you the best ideas, examples, case studies, tools and technologies um, about live video. And we connected initially through live video. And uh, you may know of our story where we were streaming together for about nine months before we actually ever met in person. So that collaboration has gone on for about three and a half years now. Um, and we started up the live stream insiders as a result of us meeting and both being passionate. Him bringing his experience in terms of uh, with news and journalism and myself in terms of for brands and businesses. So let's get on with the first story of the week. One of the things that I often get asked is, what do we want to do? What should we do, Krishna, if we're looking to have a multi-camera live stream? And we want to do it ourselves. We don't want to bring in experts in terms of a digital agency to be managing that or a video agency, as it might be. But we actually want to have multiple cameras and we really have got some limited resources and budget. A resource I highly recommend that you check out is actually called Switcher Studio. And what I want to talk to you about this week is an announcement I saw about some updates that are coming for Switcher Studio um, that you need to be aware of. One of the things that's really powerful is that Switcher Studio allows you to actually live stream using multiple iOS devices. You can have multiple iPhones around an event to be able to capture the story and then switch it in terms of which frame you want to see, which camera angle you want to see using your iPad. So let's take a little look in terms of what's ex what they're exploring in terms of updates that are coming for them now. And so this is an announcement I saw early on this week. I think it was the 1st of October that they announced this. And let me just talk you through it. So there's some new plans that are coming um, and that have been announced. And one of the things that you need to be aware of is there's some plans coming for businesses and for us if we're actually going to use it for personal use. So let's talk through the three different plans that they've got. The first one is for personal use, and that's for non-commercial use. So if you're going to use it for your business, even if it's a small business, you need to look at a different plan. And they've actually announced all the pricing, which I put a link to the resource of that article at the end of the show for you to take a look at. So let's take a look at the personal plan. This is perfect if you're a school, for example, um, if you're a blogger, if you're a church. I know lots of churches like to live stream events. Now, just be careful if you're live streaming where there's music that you don't have any issues there in terms of copyright. So you might just want to think about what element of your event that you live stream in that particular case. It could be for youth sports events. Now, again, make sure that you've got the rights and permissions to actually feature the people people in your live stream if you're going to do that. And that pricing, that new pricing for personal plans is effective from the 1st of October. Um, now, let's take a look in terms of that plan allows you to use Switcher Studio app on iOS and Mac and also PC screen sharing and also this standard email support. If, however, you are a business um, and you actually want to use it for your organization, then you need to look at the new professional plan. That gives you the ability to schedule your posts. So you might remember that previously you could certainly schedule that scheduling feature if you want to continue to have that. You need to move to the professional plan. 
Also, if you want to cross post to Facebook, so for example, I cross post this live stream to a number of different uh, locations. One of the things for you to be aware of is I'm using BlueJeans here as my platform. I'm actually streaming here from desktop. And so if you want to be able to cross post to multiple pages, if you want to be able to schedule and promote that scheduled post and drive people to come and watch at a certain time and date in terms of in the future, um, then you need to be making sure that you move to the professional plan. But there's also going to be some new features that are going to be uh, rolling out there. They've announced that there's going to be cloud storage for your most used brand assets. So, for example, one of the benefits of using Switcher Studio is you can bring in lower thirds, you can bring in images, you can also use it in terms of bringing in video content as well. And so you'll be able to post that in the cloud. You won't have to have it on your device, which I think is great. Um, makes it really easy for you to be able to use, particularly if you switch devices now and again. And also there's going to be video calling um, and there'll be other extensions that are coming as well. And then on top of that, there actually is going to be um, a, new, uh, a new program there. It's the Enterprise Plan. And in the Enterprise Plan, one of the things that uh, you'll be able to do there is if you're an agency, and I know lots of people are actually, let's say, social media agencies, PR agencies, digital agencies, and they want to be able to use Switcher Studio for their clients. Well, that's the way that you do that. And uh, that gives you some other Facebook integrations. It gives you some advanced permissions um and also has uh, hands-on tra training and other tools you can reach out to them for information about that plan so i think that's really exciting to see that switcher studio is continuing to develop i'm actually going to just check here if there's any questions or comments about that um let me just have a look and um i actually think it's great to see them actually developing it um a Switcher Studio, yes, Ruth, unfortunately, it's for iOS. There are other platforms available for iOS, but iOS is the, the main platform for that multi-camera angle, multi -camera angle from um, mobile devices. Um, in terms of being able to start and manage your whole event from your mobile device, um, and also to be able to you know, manage those other assets in there as well. Otherwise, in most of the tools, I haven't come across anything that I've personally tested um, that I would re be recommending at this stage. I've got tested some other things on Android, but not one that I'm actually recommending um, to clients at this moment in time, just because I've had some personal glitches with that. But there are other, are other iOS uh, platforms available as well. As I said, thank you so much for joining me here live for Livestream Insiders. Um, I hope that you actually do explore Switches Studio if you're looking for multi-camera angles. The one downside is that you do need to have access to be on the same Wi-Fi. So that's why you might want to use something like vMix, uh, Ecamm Live if you're on a, a Mac, um, Wirecast, um, OBS project and so on. If you want to bring people into your live stream from a remote location. So as I said, uh, Switcher Studio is great if you've got everybody on the same Wi-Fi network. Um, you really want to be looking at other tools if you want to bring get, uh, remote guests in. And there's lots of tools there, typically um, desktop, and that could be Mac or PC related in terms of those features as well. So let's take a look at my second story for you this week. And I wonder if those of you who are in the US can let me know if you've been watching out for this show. I actually can't see it because I'm not in the US and I can't access the page. Um, obviously, as you might be aware, it happens to be where we're talking here about a Facebook uh, particular platform um, and you can actually restrict your page to only being seen by certain locations or certain demographics of people. And that's the case in terms of the Confetti Show, which is a live trivia game show. And you might remember us talking about Confetti being launched. I think it was back in about June time. We covered it on the live stream Insiders. But it's really interesting that Facebook has been running this live trivia game show 
we actually get a lot of interaction from participants actually taking place. Now, one of the things that I found when I was uh, doing some preparation for the show that, in fact, that it seems that um, a couple of months ago, they were even actually had a, a, a dog appear on the show as well. So as we know, dogs and social media go down very well. But the thing I wanted to tell you about that was happening this week was something that actually is a great way for you to think about in terms of if you wish to actually get more reach of your content and that's to do a collaboration, or you might call it a joint venture. Um, but collabs um, are very popular in terms of participating with other people. Well, Facebook themselves have been doing a collaboration this week. And so their Facebook Confetti Live Trivia Show this week actually has been collaborating with digital content creators. Of course, you might wonder why they're looking to do that. Well, it's very simple because they're hoping that those creators will be part of the show, perhaps in the future, that they'll also you know, be telling people about their collaboration with Facebook and bringing them over to watch the show. And they were looking to give um, a huge prize um, this week. It was announced when, in the article that we saw, which was in Variety, that it was $100,000 that they were giving away uh, during the course of the shows this week. So, in fact, since they started back in June, when we were first talking about them, I think they've given around half a million dollars. And so uh, that's really interesting in terms of if you're looking to participate in a game show um, and you want to look at uh, confetti over on Facebook. So it's Facebook, I think, forward slash Facebook.com forward slash confetti. Let me know if you manage to check it out as it's taken place. Um, they actually launched it in, uh, as I said, in June. Um, and actually, it's very, very similar to HQ Trivia, which was very popular or is a very popular game show app as well. And so they actually partnered with a number of um, digital creators. And I actually went and checked out um, one of them in terms of their Facebook page. And I could see that they actually had posted a very, very quick mobile live video. No fancy smancy content in there. It was just literally them to actually camera. And one of the things that was uh, interesting is that um, you know they were then directing people to come and watch the show. Now I didn't see them cross post the show onto their page, but that might just be because I don't see or access the uh, confetti page. So it might have been they promoted it on the day when they were live, but they certainly we have cross promoted it before. Um, the the show actually streams if you're interested in watching it um, at 9:30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and uh, that goes, they've got, they've got about 120,000 followers on their Facebook watch page, as I said, facebook.com forward slash confetti. And it's produced by a third party company called Thumb Candy Media on behalf of Facebook. Um, and so they were hoping that uh, people were going to encourage others to, to watch the show because of actually having these new faces actually participating. But you know, taking it away from um, just what Facebook are doing, that whole idea in terms of us collaborating with others is a great way to actually look to build reach in terms of our own live streams. If you're wondering about how how do I, can I increase my reach, then that might be a great way to do it. Now, of course, if you are doing collaborations, it's also important to make sure that, for example, if you're using uh, Facebook, that you use that actually that tool which allows you to say that it's a, a, a brand collaboration. They do want to see that kind of uh, featured in there. I'm guessing that, you know, in some cases there might be um, money, a contract that exchanges hands. If you're bringing an expert into you, it might be that it's actually they're gifting their time free. Um, and it could be, you know, let's say you're a vet, you actually might have you know, a specialist in your network come along to be actually able to talk around, you know, looking after your pets. Um, and, you know, they could be anywhere in the world using a live stream. It could be, as I said, on Facebook, it might be on Instagram, it could be on Twitch, it could be on YouTube, it could be on uh, Periscope, Twitter, many different places that you might do that. So just be aware that under the different platforms you're using, there may well be brand collaboration features that you need to pay attention to. Um, and certainly on Facebook, you can actually identify there that that's a collaboration that you're doing with people. Let me just check again to see if there's any quick questions or comments here. 
from anybody on Facebook, not at this point in time. So I do hope that um, you actually find that an interesting example. And talking about actually having you know trivia game shows or you know interactivity, that brings me on to the third and final story of the week. If you saw me post on my social media platforms, including I wrote a longer article on, on this, posted it on LinkedIn and on Google+, then you'll know that Facebook actually announced a number of new features that are now available, not just to, to a few, but actually should be available to all of us. One of them actually is something that we talked about and actually talked you through how to use the feature. And one of them is a new feature that I don't yet have on mobile, but I certainly could see it there today in terms of desktop. I haven't actually managed to practice with it, but I'm going to talk you through those different features in terms of just a moment. And so, as I said, there'll be a link to all of the features that I'm talking about here, and uh, you'll be able to see that in terms of uh, at the end of the show, I'll put a link to it. So let's take a look at what's being going on. So it's a bit of a Facebook focused show today in terms of uh, one story about how they were using game shows. And this is about how we can also look at more interactivity. Well, the first thing uh, that, that they announced is about Facebook premieres. Now you do need to be on desktop to be able to see this, but what a premiere is, and you might remember we talked about this, is that it allows you to premiere content um, that has not already been uploaded onto Facebook. So you upload it as a Facebook premiere, which means it can go get pushed out at a specific time, so you can schedule the time of your pre-recorded content. So let's say, for example, you do a Facebook Live, and it's, it's uh, you know great content, and then you decide, actually, I, I want to do something else associated with that. Maybe you've got a little tutorial that goes along with it. And rather than just uploading it as a video, actually using it as a live video will typically get you more interaction and reach. Of course, if you schedule it and you promote that link, that can also help you as well. So what happens is that when you go to your Facebook page, um, you actually will be able to see there, or you should be able to see there now, because it's now globally available. And it was only available to me on one or two pages, not all of the pages that I manage. But it gives you the option to actually upload that video as a premiere. It's right at the top of your page. Or alternatively, if you're posting it as if you're doing a post, where you're actually looking at your page rather than going to the whole area of actually you know, going into your um, settings area to kind of schedule content, if you just look at a post, it then gives you the option to say, set that video that you upload as a premiere. Now, this could be really helpful for us, for those of us who might do a live stream or an interview with somebody, where the timing of that is great for them. I mean, I've been known to record things in the middle of the night for when guests have been available for podcasts or videos, but it actually isn't necessarily the best time for you to actually share it as a live stream. And so what you can do then is upload that video content and actually share it as a live stream. Now, one thing I would absolutely advise you against doing is forgetting it, setting it and forgetting it. That for me is not good practice. I would recommend that if you're going to set it as a premiere, say to people in the post and also be there afterwards in terms of when it's going live, actually to say that you will be there answering any questions. So they can still watch that content, but then you can actually answer questions, pay attention to those questions that are coming up. And you might then afterwards jump on to another live stream to actually set up another um, kind of response to those questions, or it might give you great content for the next live stream that you do. So that actually is now available. As I said, links to um, this, uh, these new features are actually going to be in the post that I share. Um, you can schedule that premiere a week in advance, um, and so that creates you a little post as it would do for other scheduled content as well. And you get many of the same features that you would have if you were doing just posting a recorded video content. That includes monetization, also ad breaks and branded content tags as well. And Facebook announced, they said, as we focus on creating live video experiences that put people at the center, we're building ways for publishers and creators to both grow their audiences and build deeper connections with their communities through video. So that's the first part of their announcement this week in terms of the three features that they actually announced um, that were rolling out. 
The second feature is one that I mentioned I don't have access to on mobile. I can see it on desktop, but I don't believe I can get it to work with Blue Jeans because I've already had that conversation with the Blue Jeans team and I've asked them to hopefully escalate that with them. And if you're using Blue Jeans like me, perhaps you also want to actually give them a post and, and uh, ask them to see if they'll integrate it. Because when I went to set up my live stream today, what I had as an option there when I was looking on desktop is the option to have, add interactive content, which was a video poll. So you might have been testing this out. As I said, I don't actually seem to have access to it on mobile. It was initially available on mobile for some people, and now it should be available for pages, and it should be available on desktop and on mobile as well. And so interactive polls allow you to actually ask questions and have some gamification for your videos. And again, that helps you actually uh, get people to participate and interact. It might be something that you could think about doing if you're picking up that idea of that idea of a trivia show. Uh, you might not be able to afford the same size of prizes that Facebook is able to do, but actually it might be a way for you to have your own little game show. And I know when Peter and I first were using Periscope, he used to do a Sunday show um, in terms of a, a live game show on um, Periscope at that time, actually after we'd actually done our live stream inside the show. So they've actually said that they're rolling this out to more pages and live po polls are available to all pages through the live API and publishing tool. And they're going to also be adding live, uh, sorry, adding polls to on demand. So your pre-recorded content. So that will be really what interesting to watch out for. If you get access to be able to have polls in your pre-recorded content videos on Facebook, do let us know. Um, as I said, they are, they've mentioned that they're rolling that out. Um, and they actually announced a number of different publishers and the results that they've been getting in terms of using interactive content. I did say in my article, and I'll still stand by this, that I'm personally a bit disappointed. I've seen a number of people saying they're really excited about the live interactive polls. Let me tell you why I was a bit disappointed. Because you might remember um, a few months ago, we talked about the fact that Facebook had bought the live video platform, um, which is called Vidpresso. And Vidpresso was definitely known for their interactive content and actually really beautifully designed um, nice graphics in terms of their content. And they actually then stopped building their business. They were acquired by Facebook. And therefore, I was anticipating that we might have seen some of that wonderful graphic interface that actually Vidpresso has. Um, and I'm not seeing that. So I have to say, interesting to see live interactive content. Let us know if you actually test it out and you get some good results in terms of, of using these new polls on your Facebook Live videos. Um, you should, as I said, be able to see it also on your mobile device. So I've seen a number of people post um, live streams with those with the interactive content on their Facebook profiles. Um, you may or may not have access to it on, on pages yet because they said they're rolling it out, but it looks like it's certainly on our pages now, certainly for live stream insiders. Um, and check out with the different providers that you're working with if they've integrated that as well so that you can actually use that feature. I'll capture some screenshots after I finish the show today and I'll be putting them into an article probably during the course of the week to show people where they actually will find it. But it's pretty easy to be able to see it with that new feature. And it was a little blue prompt as usual from Facebook to say, uh, check out this feature. So let me know, have you been using this new feature of um, Facebook Live Polls? What results have you been getting in terms of using polls on your page? Um, let me just have a look. Yes, Ruth, you're saying you can remember the Vidpresso announcement. Yeah, and so perhaps they're going to be bringing out some other interesting new features. Um, and uh, I hope, as I said, they get some of that interactivity um, and beautiful graphics um, and features that we actually saw from Vidpresso. So let's talk about the third part of this story from Facebook. And that's something that if you've got 10,000 fans on your page, um, you should now have access to. And it's called Top Fans. Now, we certainly are a long way off having 10,000 fans of the live stream inside this page. But perhaps you're managing a page 
for yourself or you're managing a page for a client or for your organization and they've got more than 10,000 fans, take a look at this feature. And I know lots of people really like it. Um, and so this feature is, as I said, it's called Top Fans, which allows you to highlight um, people who are your most loyal fans on your page. And it displays a little badge alongside their name. And we do know that people like to have recognition. So that might be for you in terms of you in your live stream, watching comments and responding to questions from, that are coming in from your audience and mentioning those people by name. So it all depends on your approach for your live stream. But this is another way that you can recognize your fans. And that means that um, if they've been become one of the most active people on a page, um, and that might be watching your videos, uh, reacting, commenting, sharing your content, that can all contribute to them being a top fan of yours. And they've said that now this is available to all pages globally. So you do have to have, as I said, 10,000 followers of your page. And then you have the option to activate that. You can actually then turn on the feature. Um, and um, it actually gives you some tips in the article that I'll share with you in terms of how to do that. You'll be able to turn on that feature if you just go to your page settings. Um, I'm not sure if you can do that just from uh, desktop or if it's available for you to do on mobile and desktop. As I said, I don't have access to that. Um, the top fan badge will appear when somebody comments on a post or a video, and that includes if they post on a premiere as well. So if they're commenting in your premiere, content, so you've uploaded that video, you then stream it out live in terms of that pre-recorded content, um, then that also counts them to them be, being recognized as a top fan. And you might want to think about different ways that you encourage people to be you know, interacting, and maybe you have something that you might do as a, a little giveaway or a thank you gift, or maybe you give them a, you know, some uh, swag, a, a pen, a, a baseball cap, or you know, a mouse mat, if anybody uses mouse mats anymore, or a mug or something with your brand on it for those top, you know, top fans of the month or whatever. And they said they'll look to expand uh, in terms of on these uh, different types of tools to create more interactive uh, um, video experiences, both that be that for live video or also pre-recorded video, um, in terms of when people are looking to build a community on on Facebook. So what are your thoughts? Do you think you'd want to turn on top fans or are you a page or managing a page where you think that is not, not something that um, you know people um, in your organization would really want to use? Because there's sometimes good reasons for us not to be using some of the features that are made available to us. Um, let me just see if there's any other thoughts that you've got in terms of using this new top fans feature or if you've actually seen it and have rolled it out. Um, so nobody's saying that uh, they're using top fans and I'm checking on one of my pages and let me just checking on the video on another page here. And again, no, uh, no comments about uh, top fans being used there. So if you're using it, let me know in terms of what your experience has been and if it's something that you actually do recommend that others use. But we've talked about three things today in terms of our, our show. We talked about Switcher Studio and some interesting planned updates that they've got now rolled, rolled out in terms of some new features coming, but also really important to take notice of if you're an agency or if you're an organization looking to use Switcher Studio, check out their new plans for professional uh, streams and also their, you know, their enterprise stream if you're an agency managing live streams on behalf of clients. We talked about the ideas from that um, collaboration that actually Facebook did for their um, gate live game show and that might be a way for you to actually get more interaction in terms of onto your own streams and we talked about that importantly just watching out in terms of got it you've got uh, uh, have identified it if it's on facebook in terms of it being a brand collaboration um and so having those tags in place and the third thing um that we talked about there was all those updates we've got for facebook in terms of for video and live video some you might want to test out and some you might feel are not appropriate for you I hope you've actually found this week's show of assistance in terms of the, the topics that we've covered. Do let me know in terms of if you've got any questions as a follow-up to what we've been sharing here today. Um, I'm hoping that Peter is going to be able to be with me for next week's episode. But until then, I just want to say thank you so much for being here uh, with me in terms of uh, 
uh, being part of Livestream Insiders and being part of the community here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, or you're listening to the audio podcast or watching the recorded um, video uh, video that we actually then post onto uh, YouTube and also onto Vimeo. If you've got questions about live video, then please do reach out to us. Equally, if you've got questions about live audio, we'd love to hear from you. Or if you've got an interesting case study that you think the community would love us to share, we really would appreciate you getting in touch. But for this week, that's episode 153 of Livestream Insiders. This week's episode on the 7th of October, 2018. Gosh, not many weeks until we actually have the festive season upon us. Peter and I need to be getting our thinking caps on, as I mentioned last week, in terms of what we might want to be recommending in terms of our gift recommendations for either yourself or live streamers in your life. Until next time, thanks again for joining me here for Livestream Insiders.